together before we go forward. Pray with me out loud. Say it with me. Say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I open my heart, I open my ears, and I expect you to speak to me right where I am. My ears are open and my heart is ready for all that you have for me today. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, we thank you for your word. We ask you, Lord, speak to us today. Minister to us right where we are. With open ears and an open heart, Father, we just thank you for all that you have for us today. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. You know, uh, last Sunday we talked about your thoughts, your words, talked about who your enemy is. Those are the things you need to recognize in your life that can block your year of abundant overflow. I stopped. I started with the blocking, the blockages, so that you could get that out of your way during this fast. But today I want to talk to you about the, your year of abundant overflow. All right? You know, years ago, we, we, we endeavored to be givers uh, in everything that we set our hands to. To be the most faithful worker, to be the most, uh, to have a servant's heart. It's something that's always been important to me. And uh, people have asked me through the years what got you to where you are. And the more I think about it, it's the, having a servant's heart. Being willing to, even when, you don't, when you're not comfortable, to shut your mouth and be faithful. Amen. Well, that's really exciting, isn't it? Amen. You know, some of you talk so ugly about other people that you wonder why promotion doesn't happen to you. I can tell you why. The words of your mouth. The meditation of your heart. See, he has to be first. But I can tell you, every blessing that we've walked through, every door we have gone through, every one of them, was all out of being faithful. All out of being uh, uh, faithful and having that servant's heart. You know, we had, we've had crazy things happen to us. And I shared this a, a couple years back, uh, but I, I, I got to thinking a while back, I ought to share this again during this, this message. But, you know, I, I, we had, um, we've had cars and trucks come through our hands constantly. We've had people walk up to us and give us vehicles left and right. Uh, as of uh, the last time that I did this accounting, uh, we're at 19 different vehicles uh, uh, through these years. Amen. Uh, Toyota truck, two Cadillacs, a, a Pontiac Fiero, Dodge Colt, Cadillac Eldorado. Uh, tr try? Jaguar. A Jaguar. I've got there. I'm getting there. Uh, a, a Spitfire, a Triumph Spitfire, a Buick Cutlass. Uh, our old brown Chevy van was paid off in full. Somebody walked up and said, we're going to pay your van off. Uh, uh, the, the Jaguar is a four-door Jag, the big, nice one, given to us. Amen. Uh, uh, a Ford Ranger. Uh, we had a Nissan that got, came into our hands that Thomas drove back and forth to Ramah until it almost died. Amen. But it was a blessing. Uh, we had a Nissan truck that somebody gave to us, a, a, a uh, a Nissan Altima, a Toyota Avalon, fully loaded Avalon was blessed to us. Uh, a Yukon XL was paid off for us, that, that Yukon we used to drive. Completely paid off. Somebody walked up and said, we're going to pay that off for you. Amen. Uh, we had a Toyota Camry that came into our hands a while back. The car that Andrew drives came into our hands, uh, half the price of it. And uh, uh, the, if somebody in the family wanted to bless us with, it, with not having to pay so much for it, and uh, you know what? God was good. And then we had somebody come up after I read this the last time. They came up and said, I want to be car number 19. <laughs> and uh, that was funny. And uh, um, car number 19 was a Dodge van. You know, if you're believing for something impossible, uh, you know, if you're not believing for something impossible, you're really not using your, your faith well. Because God, you can put your faith out there. God will do crazy things for you. Amen. I've had people walk up and pay for our meal. I got in the habit of paying for other people's meal a long time ago after that. Uh, we were at Cracker Barrel one day, and there was this lady that came in. She uh, it was her and I think her mom, but she had 12 little children. And they were the best kids i ever seen, uh, seen uh, sitting at a table at Cracker Barrel. They had all the tables pushed together, and all of them were sitting there eating breakfast. And, and they were laughing, but they weren't loud. Well, I leaned over to the waitress when she came by and said, make sure you give me their check before we go. And she did. 
And you know, it was a hundred and something dollars for their food. Uh, <laughs> yeah, for that many people, it was cheap, but uh, you know, it was uh, something. And I thought, all right. And I just took a step of faith and made sure I gave an, uh, 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 um, a tip that equaled the same. And you know what? If you get into a habit of giving, God will do crazy things in your life. You know, uh, the guy who was crippled, you know, he had, he had a couple crazy friends that got him before Jesus. You know what? God will do some extravagant things in your life if you believe him for it, but also if you'll be generous. Are you listening to me? We started making a practice of uh, just uh, uh, doing extra things at restaurants and stuff because there, especially during this last year, I started just equaling whatever we're given, going to equal the, uh, the check we just paid for or more on the tip. Because I just, I've gotten into that mode. And you know what? All this past year has been absolutely the most incredible year of our lives. But I'm telling you this year, and say it out loud what this says right here. Say it all together. One, two, three. My year of abundant overflow. You know, God's no respecter of persons. What he did for me, he'll do for you. I said, God's no respecter of persons. What he did for me, he'll do for you. He's the same yesterday, today, and how long? What he did in Matthew, Luke, and John, he'll do for you right now. You need to believe him for it. You need to be speaking that way. You need to be walking that way. You know, that's just one example. I could tell you a whole lot of other ones. But I'm going to tell you something. Jesus like, likes excess. Jesus likes excess. Yep. When he multiplied the fish and the bread, it was more than what was needed, wasn't it? Yep. I mean, it was more than what was needed. Most theologians, if you'll read the commentary when he fed the 5,000, that he actually, it was just men when you read how it's written, but he actually probably fed... 10 to 11,000 women and children and men and grandparents because they were all gathered there to hear the Lord. You know, a little kid's lunch who sowed it to the master, he multiplied it. Amen. See, this is your year of abundant overflow. Are you hearing me? You know, one of the things that we're, uh, we're pushing uh, uh, this year is uh, I, I'm, I want you to believe that you can be debt free this year. Amen. I believe God will, will, can move, move finances in your life in such a way where you can be debt-free. This fast ought to be a starting point. You ought to realize what you can do without and how much money you can save by doing without something. And you can do more in your life. Amen. If you do your part first, honor God and honor Him in, in, in the way that you live, you can expect God to do a miracle in your finances. Come on. The Bible says in Ephesians 3.20, Now unto him is able to do exceedingly, abundantly what? Above all that we ask or think. Can you say amen? amen. Well, you know, we just, we've endeavored for a while to just really push and be faithful in how we give. And that's what I want to kind of get into today as we talk about part one here of my year of abundant overflow. I do not believe at all that this is the time to draw back, buy dry beans, and store up all the toilet paper you can. <laughs> to be honest with you, there's a lot of fear wrapped up in a lot of things that have been going on. And the devil has used it so that you won't walk in faith and let your confession rule your roost. Folks, 2021 is not the time to draw back and hide under a rock. 2021 is not the time for you to be lazy and, oh, I just need to go cover up in the bed and just run and hide, run and hide. I'm chicken little. The sky is falling, the sky is falling. Well, that's not faith. There's no faith in that. I mean, Peter walked on the water. What are you doing? I'm going to fill my bathtub up and walk on that. How about that? <laughs> Amen. See, you know, uh, now's not the time for you to be lazy or I guess the word's lethargic. Now's the time for you to draw closer to God than you've ever drawn before. He needs to be your center of focus. There was reasons I spoke about how Jesus is my central theme last year. There was a reason I spoke on that. And here we are. You know, every time you come to church, you're hearing a message that's prophetic in nature. 
And you need to respect the word enough to write it down and get a hold of it. Because it matters. You know, as you stand in faith, trusting God this year, you're not going to have any need to be fearful or worry about what's happening in the news or about what's happening in the country or about what's happening around the world. All you need is faith in God, like Brother Shambach would always say. You don't have any problems. All you need is faith in God. Amen. Amen. I declare over you that 2021 will be a time of great excitement, a time of great hope, and a time of unparalleled blessing flowing into your life. Do you believe that with me? Yeah. I believe it. Amen. In fact, I think it's time for you and for me to shine as lights and to demonstrate to this world that there is no God like our God. Amen. Amen. There's no God like my God. Hallelujah. You know, and if there ever was a time to be strong in the Lord, it's right now. This moment, this hour. It's, this is the time to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. This is that day. This is that moment. Amen. You know, regardless of how unstable things seem, you know what? You can still stand strong in faith and be happy and dance a little bit. Amen. You can still ha, ha, ha at the devil because Jesus is still Lord. Well, one person knows that. All right. You know, we have one of our church members, they got a huge, huge raise at the first of the year. And their business had kind of slowed down. But their employer saw fit to really bump their salary and give them a bonus on top of that. What are you believing for? These are the greatest days, not only in history, but the greatest days of our lives. This is not as the stomach turns. This is not as the world turns. This is as Jesus turns and revolves in your life. Amen. He's still Lord. He's still King of Kings. You know, the Bible tells us in Hebrews uh, chapter 12 here in verses uh, 28 and 29, and this is from the message translation. It says, do you see what we've got? I believe the Lord's speaking to you directly this morning. You watching online, he's speaking right to you. Don't you see what we got? An unshakable kingdom. And do you see how thankful we must be? Not only thankful, but brimming with worship. Deeply reverent before God. Folks, God wants to revive you from the inside out this year. God wants not only to revive you, but to bring a refreshing into your life and into your family and into your business. Into, even if you work from home, He can bring things to you left and right. Amen. What a year it's been last year. You just click a button and it shows up at the door the next day. Thank God for all the postal workers and all the UPS and the Amazon Prime and all that. That's just awesome. It's incredible to see what, what creative giftings that God placed in those people have done for all of us in this past year. But I'm telling you, the greatest and best days are just ahead. Amen. Amen. The greatest and best days are just ahead. Not for any other reason, but because Jesus is Lord. Amen. Jesus is Lord and His Word still works. Look at this verse though. Don't you see what we've got? An unshakable kingdom? And do you see how thankful we must be? You're supposed to be thankful. You're supposed to be thankful. Not whining and complaining. Remember, if you get the spirit of faith in your mouth and in your life, it'll take the whine and the victim right out of your mouth. Amen. You need to be thankful. And brimming with worship and reverence towards your God deeply. Amen. See, this is your year of abundant overflow, folks. Say it out loud with me, just like it says on the screen here. This is the year of abundant overflow for me. Come on, shout it out with me one more time. Ready? This is the year of abundant overflow for me. Do you believe that or is that just lip service? The Word of God promises you a year of abundant overflow, but you know, not just a year, every year. What are you believing for? Man, I'm believing for God's best. I'm believing for crazy things to happen. Crazy favor. Man, we've had crazy favor with banks. We've had crazy favor with, with, with uh, uh, just walking through Walmart. 
having a big laugh because of Melissa leaving the tag out. Amen. But uh, we, we, we've had all sorts of just fun things happen in our lives, but I know it's all because of our confession and because of where and who we focus on. Amen. It wasn't whether or not taxes were low. Even when taxes were high, we had the blessed, most blessed year of our life that year. And every eight years, all those eight years when taxes were just taken up, we continued to have overflowing blessings. You need to get your eyes on the one who always provides. The kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but righteousness, peace, and what? Joy in the Holy Ghost. You need to shake off your heavy bands and lift up some holy hands and begin to magnify the king. Amen. Because he's still Lord. Yes, he is. To hear some people these days, you kind of wonder. Yeah. See, your confession will draw your business in with more business. Your confession will give you more raises and bonus than you can imagine or dream for. The life that you live matters. Can I hear an amen? amen. See, the times we're living in right now remind me of the book of Joel. And I'm going to turn to Joel in just a second. Look at uh, Joel chapter 1 here. But... Uh, uh, during that time, they were facing a lot of lack. During that time, there was uh, uh, upheaval in political things, and uh, there was uh, a lot of inconsistencies. There were, uh, uh, in that time in world history, there was insufficiency, there was hopelessness, there was all sorts of stuff. But the prophet Joel spoke a warning, a warning. And these are the words that he spoke. He said this, he says, uh, Listen closely, everyone. Whoever and wherever you are, sober up. Notice he didn't say saber up. Sober up. Get in touch with reality. Round up everyone. Get them into serious prayer to God. He realigned everybody's focus in the words that he spoke from the Spirit of God. See, our focus needs to be on the Holy One. Our focus needs to be on the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Can I hear an amen? amen? He needs to be our all in all, our everything. You know, during times of hardship, you know, uh, the word of the Lord was, was written here to, uh, and I believe as a call to get us serious today, right where we are, serious in our relationship with God. And you know, the same is true uh, no matter what's going on. Uh, in, in the world, no matter what, no matter what year it is, no matter what, you know, God's moving. You know what? I plan to be right in the middle of the blessings of God. How about you? Amen. God's moving every day. I, I plan to be right there in the middle, just speaking my faith and watching every mountain bow to me. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And when I speak his name, whew, when I speak his name, just like when they were in the boat and they went out and cast their nets, as soon as Jesus spoke the word, every fish in the lake, swam towards the net. That's why they had an abundant harvest. Your words matter. Your word is powerful in your mouth just as powerful as it is in God's. It's time to speak it. It's time to stand up and pull your own britches up and be somebody. Amen. See, if you'll respond to what Joel's saying to us today, if you'll respond to it in, in the right way here with the right heart by drawing closer to God, there are some things in chapter 2 that, he, that God promises for me and you. And I want you to see them here. They're in your handout today. Things that God will do according to Joel chapter 2. And I'm going to hurry up and skip the verse that I was going to read. But uh, go back and read chapter 2 out of a couple of different translations today. You need to notice a couple of the four things that God will do from Joel chapter 2 for you. If you'll just focus on the Lord and draw closer to Him. Because he wants you to have an abundant overflow this year. Amen? Number one, he'll cause great peace to be upon you and your home life. He'll, number two, he'll keep his people safe from all harm. Amen? Number three, he'll bring about an abundant overflow of blessings, including material and financial prosperity. Amen. Number four, he'll cause an outpouring of the Holy Ghost, of his Spirit, to come like the land and everything around you has never experienced before. Amen. You see in this? It's in your handout. It's already written down for you. All you got to do is go back and begin to speak it out of your mouth. My God causes great peace to come into my life. 
He keeps me safe from all harm and danger. Woo! He'll bring about an abundant overflow of blessings into my life. Material things, financial things, all because I'm focused on the Holy One. Amen. He'll cause an outpouring of His Spirit in my life because I've taken some time just to draw upon Him and worship Him. Amen. And having, having uh, uh, His blessing upon all the land that I walk on, on all the places my feet tread, and I will experience His blessing of the Holy Spirit and fire in my life as never before. Amen. You know, there's never been a time like right now where it's more important for God's promises to be fulfilled in our lives than ever before. And this year is that year. This year is that moment. Amen. This year is that moment. See, folks, you need miraculous power of God's abundant overflow operating in your life. You need to be speaking the, the words of faith that draw those things into your life. Abundant overflow, folks, just literally means you're flourishing in every aspect. Amen. Do you believe that with me today? Amen. Amen. You're flourishing in every aspect. Amen. You know, now when we go to a restaurant, and, and you'll say, well, that's just because you're blessing people. Yeah, but I got a reason for it. I bless people because I, I know they need it. You know, restaurant workers won't get but what, two bucks an hour? They live off tips. If you're snotty and stingy, they're not going to think too highly of you. But if when we walk into such our favorite restaurant, they wait on us. <laughs> In fact, it was the last time the manager came over and talked to us and told us how much he appreciated us. And I just looked at him and said, hey, we love you and we love this place. And uh, man, I did the same thing again to, to a server I didn't even know because our favorite one wasn't there that day. But you know what? It's open doors for favor with things. Having extra things brought to the table over and over and over. You know, you, you live the way you talk and you live the way you give. Not Are you listening to me? Amen. You need to get a revelation, folks, that when you're flourishing, when you're walking in abundant overflow in every area of your life, you're doing it in your finances, you're doing it in your physical health, you're doing it in your marriage. You're doing it in your job. And it's going on also with your kids and their kids. Amen. Blessed in everything. Blessed in every way. Somebody shout amen. amen. You know, some Christians still doubt if, that God wants them to operate in abundance. They still doubt it. They, or, or they believe it, but they, don't really, they just don't think, well, I'm not really sure that's for me. I, I just don't know. And they give according to their budget and uh, uh, or, or according to what they think they can do. You know, I, I always want to give towards my harvest. Because that works. It's worked for us. That was the step of faith going this far. But you've got to start. Amen. A lot of people just don't believe it, that, that blessings are for them. But the truth is, Jesus died so you could have abundant blessings. Amen. He broke the curse so that poverty could no longer rule your life unless you allow it. The truth is, if God will do it for any member of His family, folks, He'll do it for you. All you got to do is trust Him. And I want you to understand something. You need to understand that abundant overflow literally means that you have more than an adequate supply. How many of you ever heard people say, I'm just, we're getting by, we're doing good? No, God wants you to have an abundant supply. I said, God wants you to have an abundant supply. Amen. Why? You know, in Deuteronomy 8.18, He gave you the power to make and to create wealth so that you can further His what? Amen. Covenant. His covenant in the earth. There's a reason that we give. There's things that need to happen. And you're a part of the kingdom principles and operation when we act on those things. Amen. David in, 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 in uh, Psalm 23.5 he said, what does he say? My cup, what? Runneth over. But I love the way the Amplified Bible reads. It says, my cup brims with blessing. My cup brims with blessing. You ever poured a, uh, your, your tea or your water glass or 
I did it with coffee the other morning. I wasn't looking. I was looking at something else and stirring while I was pouring. And I overflowed my cup. I could hardly carry it without it sloshing all over my hands. And, and I'd had it in the microwave, too. It was hot. And I'm just shouting for joy. Amen. And, you know, uh, uh, you know, that's brimming over where it sloshes out on everything around you. That's what God's blessings will do for you this year. Amen. Amen. See, overflow. Woo! Just like that bucket there. Just splattering out everywhere. 2021, folks, is a year of abundant overflow for you, your family, your business, your job, the Lord's church, everything we set our hands to. And I know a lot of people have the wrong idea about prosperity, that it's being materialistic. But that's not what I'm talking about. God's not against you having good things and having nice things. He's not against you being financially uh, blessed. But we all, we all have to keep finances and material things in the proper perspective. Amen? Amen? We all have to keep things in the proper perspective. In other words, uh, you can't just love money. Money was, is so you can be a blessing. Amen? You cannot love money. It cannot have you. Jesus needs to be the Lord of your pocketbook. Amen? See... God is giving us abundant overflow every day of our lives, not so we can store it up, but so that you can use it to bless humanity and use it to finance the work of the Lord. I'll say that again. God wants you to operate and have abundant overflow, not so just so you can store it up, but so that you can use it to bless humanity and use it to finance the work of the Lord. We, uh, Mark was up there at Ridgely with me, and we heard Mark Hankins, and we went to Boydettes. Has anybody ever been to Boydettes? You need to go to Boydettes. That's some good eating up there on Real Foot Lake, let me tell you. They got a grilled pork chop just out of this world. Um, bowls of green beans, bowls of navy beans, bowls, bowls of sweet corn slaw. Just so good. Oh, my gosh. And deep fried onion rings that'll make you just... Just pass out. Oh, it's so good. Lunchtime. Lunch, it's lunchtime. Okay. It's about an hour and a half, two hour drive from here probably. But we could go eat lunch. Amen. But get some good eating. And you know, we went up there and, and I did the thing that I do when we was leaving. I, I, I doubled the check. That's what I did. And when I, the lady, I, I, she asked me, she was filling it out. You know, when they give you, give them your debit, debit card and, and, and they say, well, how much of a tip you want to leave? Instead of letting me fill it out, she asked me. I just told her what was the check amount, and I had her say it back to me. I said, make the tip that much. If you get into a habit of being a sower, it'll change your world. That's why 19 cars flow. I said, that's why 19 cars flow. Not because I'm a preacher. It's not because of anything. God's no respecter of persons, is that right? See, you cannot have the wrong idea about prosperity. Jesus wasn't poor. So, well, he had no place to lay his head. He couldn't lay his head in that town because they were offended. Nobody would have him. If you read when he told Andrew and them to follow him, he took him to his house. I don't have time to get into all that, but you really need to study more about, about those things. He was a carpenter. I've never seen a poor contractor. Have you? He made some classy furniture. He learned from his, his earthly father. But just for what it's worth, God's not against prosperity. He's against you being materialistic. Amen. You with me today? Why does he want you to be blessed? So that you can bless others. So that you can go and be a blessing. Amen. See, God wants you and me in this year, starting this year, to be his vessel. His vessel of honor. He wants you to be so blessed that you have more than enough, not only to take care of your family, but, but plenty left over to take care of other families. Amen. And the main reason for blessing you and causing you to have abundant overflow is so that you can be involved in the next great move of God that's happening right now. Amen. Being a blessing. Folks, get this down on the inside of you today. Get it on the inside of you. God is making you a vessel and He'll use you as a distributor of finances in this move of God if you'll be willing and obedient. 
And Isaiah says, if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. I said, if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the what? Good of the land. In the Living Bible, the old greenback one, if you'll only obey me, I'll make you rich is how it reads. What are you believing for? I believe for more to be a blessing. Amen. I'm believing that even during a time of unprecedented chaos, I'm believing that I will be a distributor of wealth to this world. Amen. I am believing that I'll be a distributor of food. I'm believing that I'll be a distributor of the goodness of God, the healing power of God, the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because this move of God has been happening for a while. And it's happening this year in an unprecedented measure. You need to be on the forefront. Not lagging behind. Not cowering in fear. Not all covered up. But you need to drop the fear and get out in faith. And be the man and woman of God that you've been called to be. Can I hear an amen? amen. Say it out loud right now. Say, God is making me a vessel of honor. And He'll use me as, as a distributor of finances in the move of God. Do you believe that today? I don't care how chaotic it is. I don't care what's intensifying every day on the TV. Turn it off. It's nothing but bad news anyway. And it sure don't feed your faith. What's your confession? Watch it. Pay attention to your words. Watch what you're saying. See, your words are like a magnet that draws things to you. Your words are a magnet that draws things to you. And let me say it again. The word out of your mouth is just as powerful as the word that flows from God's mouth. Because when you're speaking His word, things happen. Amen? Things happen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Amen. You know, I know it's crazy, but you know what? We're living in the, most time, in the greatest time of unprecedented favor and blessing that we've ever seen in history. Even during the gas sort. Y'all remember being in the car waiting in line at the gas pumps in the 70s? What a joyous time that was. When you go back and you study the economics of it, there really wasn't a, 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 a lack of fuel. There was a lack of supply. And it caused a whole lot of panic. But the gas and the oil was always there. If it wasn't, we wouldn't be having any today. <laughs> but we sure got it, don't we? Yeah. I love it. They want to have eco-friendly cars. <laughs> I forgot what the what was it that was said. That, uh, uh, I think it was the dude that's doing all the rockets. Uh, Elon, Musk. Elon Musk was saying, you know, you, you can have an electric car, but it's going to take oil and gas to produce the electricity enough to power the cars he made the statement that there's not enough electricity to power if everybody had an electric car you're going to have to have gas you're going to have to have oil in fact, in fact for what it's worth you can't have plastic car parts without oil and that wonderful plexiglass screen at the, doc at the doctor's office and at the, re at the restaurant when you're checking out. And that wonderful plexiglass screen at the Walmart and, and Kroger. You know what? That took oil to make. If you just use common sense and understand history, you'll live a lot happier and not crazy for what it's worth. I don't live crazy. I live blessed. I put my money where my mouth is. I put my faith where my mouth is. What are you putting where your mouth is? <laughs> <laughs> Folks, I'm not going to miss the move of God. I hope you're with me. I said, I'm not going to miss this move of God. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Amen. Say it, loud, say it out loud one more time. Say it's abundant overflow time. For me and my house. Let me close with this verse. This is really the, the crust of it all. The real key, the real key is what I'm about to give you. Proverbs 11, 24 and 25. We've read it before we've received the offering this morning. The Bible says this. Generosity brings what? But withholding from charity brings what? Poverty. If you want to know why you don't have a big harvest, look at what you're sowing. 
Look at what you're sowing. Amen. The one I was telling you about in the church got a job, a, a bonus raise and all that, and extra cash, and Lord knows whatever gift cards he got at the same time. <laughs> They're big givers. Big. They don't just tithe to the penny. You know, $20.92. That's it. <laughs> You want to get into to, to overflow in your life this year? You really need to get poverty out of your head. Well, I'm only doing 10. That's all God gets. The Bible talks about generosity in ways that I don't think a lot of you can handle. If you want His best, act on His Word. It'll change your life spiritually in our goal listings, uh, in our handout, spiritual goals, personal goals, relationship goals, financial goals. If you'll focus your attention on God, be obedient to His Word, He will bring things into your hands because He knows He can trust you with it. Are you listening to me? If He can't trust you with, his, with money, it's, you won't see things coming. Because you're still maturing and growing. Folks, we need to get a hold of what He has for us. This is good preaching today. Amen. What's the verse say? Generosity brings prosperity, but withholding from charity brings poverty. Those who live to bless others will have blessings, what? Heaped upon them. I like it. Heaped upon them. <laughs> Heaped upon them. Amen. Do it with me. Heaped upon them. Amen. Hallelujah. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and what? Running over. In other words, you've got to pick up your robe if you were living in Bible days and hold it up because you're going to have to catch everything that's flowing into your lap. Amen. Heaped upon you. And the one who pours out his life to pour out blessings will be what? Saturated. Shout saturated. Saturated. Amen. Saturated with favor. Hey, say, say both words. Say, I am heaped upon, and I am saturated. You believe that? I do. Every day of my life. I mean, we went to, we went to Bockerman's and had lunch. I love going to Bockerman's. I found out Melissa's not that crazy about it. She hadn't found anything she likes yet, but I love going there. Homemade soup. Oh, I love it. I, you know, everything in my life revolves around food. Anyway, and Jesus, and Jesus. But you know, uh, they had that uh, pepper, uh, what was it? What's it called, Andrew? Oh, well. Oh, well, you're not helping me at all. Y'all get it all the time. Pepper steaks. Uh, pepper steak. Not steak, but whatever. It's a pepper, it's a pepper uh, soup. And I went up to the window. Normally, they let you dip it yourself, but they've changed some things. What would you say? It's called stuffed pepper soup. There you go. <laughs> stuffed pepper soup. Uh, you know, uh, well, we were talking to the girl at the register, and uh, I went by to uh, tell her I wanted to get some soup, and... She said, just a minute, I'll be right with you. And she went and had to wait on people, you know. All the restaurant workers wearing their mask and being all proper and all that. And we appreciate that. Uh, but she finally, after I stood there for a while, she came back. And she just gave me a bowl of soup. She gave me a bowl that was overflowing. Yeah. Amen. I mean, she fixed me a bowl like I fixed me a bowl of ice cream at home. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> she fixed me a bowl like if I had hot fudge cake at home, I would have fixed me some hot fudge cake. Do you understand what I'm saying? I mean, not just a little bit of hot fudge, but that bowl of hot fudge is going to be on my bowl. Amen? Not just a little bit of whipped cream, but a lot of whipped cream. Do you understand? Folks, that's the kind of God we serve. And that's the kind of year we are about to have. Can I hear an amen? amen. The central theme as you leave today is this, and don't forget it. Abundant overflow is the will of God for all His children. Abundant overflow is the will of God for all His children. Folks, this year is the year of abundant overflow. But the ones who are going to really enjoy it are the ones who are going to be radical about their service towards God. Radical in their spirituality. Radical in the things of God in their life. But radical also in their generosity towards others and towards God. Folks, it's time that we tap into everything that the Master has for us. Everything that He's planned for us. 
It's time that we get serious about our relationship with Him. It's time to move closer to Him. It's time to obey His Word and be generous and be faithful to Him and do His Word. Be a doer of His Word. Amen. It's time to pray in the Holy Ghost more. It's time to do things the way God's instructed us to do because a lot of people just say, well, I believe that, but they don't ever do it. It's time to be a doer. Can I hear an amen? Amen. If you do that, folks, I promise you, abundant overflow is on its way to your house. You believe it? Amen? Stand up on your feet. Hallelujah. Amen. Stand up. Hallelujah. Lift your hands towards heaven there. Just begin to magnify Him. Lord, we just thank You right now. We magnify You. We thank You, Lord, just like this picture of Niagara Falls. Your abundant blessing just roars down over us. Amen. That the windows of heaven are open on our behalf, just like this photo. And Lord, your blessings are pouring over us. And they're so awesome and so incredible that you can't even hear yourself talk over the thunder of your heaping and your saturation of the blessings of God in our lives. Spiritual blessings, health blessings, marriage blessings, increased blessings, Good things, blessings. Hallelujah. Supernatural favor, blessings. Lord, we just thank you because as we honor you, we operate in all those things. Because 2021 is our year of abundant overflow. We will not be denied. We will never lack because we serve a great God. A God who's still on the throne. And that, Lord, we are a part of the greatest body ever on the face of the earth, the body of Christ. Lord, we thank you that we are the church triumphant. And we thank you, Lord, that you are the soon coming king. And, Lord, we just worship you right now. We just declare that this year is the best year of our lives. And, Lord, we give you glory and we give you honor right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Heads bowed, eyes closed, nobody looking around. If you're in here and you're not living for the Lord like you should, if you're watching online and you're not living for the Lord, maybe you're not born again, maybe you've never asked Jesus into your life, but today's the best day of your life. It's real easy to do, and I want you to know God's got a plan for your life that's a good plan. His will for your life is blessing, not destruction. His will for your life is good things, wonderful things. And all you got to do to start living it is just ask the Lord to forgive you of all your sins. Ask Jesus into your heart. Say, Jesus, come into my life. Make me brand new. I want to be born again. I ask you to come into my heart and change me. From this moment forward, I'll live all of my days for you. In Jesus' name. That's it. That's all there is to it. If you prayed that prayer today and you're watching online or you're here today, we'd really love to give you a book and uh, pray with you. So get in touch with us so we can do that. Amen. If you're not filled with the Holy Ghost and you desire to be filled with the Holy Ghost, everybody should pray in other tongues. Somebody say amen. Amen. I mean, the Holy Ghost is power in your life. You need to pray in the Spirit. Glory to God. If you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost, come up here. We'll be glad to pray with you tonight. Or you can, if you're watching from home, you can call me on the phone. I can't tell you how many people I've led to the, in the baptism of the Holy Ghost over the telephone. Or if we're in the deep south, teletone. Amen. But you can receive the baptism. It's just that easy. Healing is received by faith. You ask Jesus into your heart by faith. You receive the baptism by faith. You receive God's blessings by faith. By faith I believe. By faith I receive. My words are a magnet. Speak His word. Amen? All right. Hey, we love you. What a great day. Um, if we can pray with you about anything, come up and we'll be glad to pray with you. You have a good-looking crowd today. Thank you for being here. It's good to see Crystal and her family here today. Amen? Good to see Valerie here. Amen? Uh, just different ones. Amen? Uh, I'm sorry. This is Valerie Puccinelli that's here. Amen? Amen? Um, no, we're just good to see everybody here, and we sure love you. Uh, if something's going on, I had somebody who watches online. They called me last night at about 10:30, 11 o'clock, and wanted me to pray for them, uh, for someone in their family. And I, they had some problems with their intestines. This lady has; she's in the intensive care unit. Uh, uh, last name uh, Swain, I believe it was. Just remember to lift her up, Mrs. Swain, and just pray for her that everything straightens out. 
and everything works normal. Amen. We believe that together. But if you need prayer for anything, we'd be glad to pray with you. We love you. Nothing happening this week but Wednesday night, so make sure you're back at church. We'll see you then. If not, we'll see you Sunday for part two of Abundant Overflow. You're dismissed.